is not always to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. The operative word, of course, is always. Most of the time, however, the swift finish first and the strong prevail. I know all about David and Goliath, but people who bet on form insist, and the record bears them out, that a good big man will usually beat a good little man, all things being equal. <laughs> There's another operative word. Equal. But this is madness, my queen. Perhaps. Then you admit it. Yes. I... I, I cannot understand. I tell you, we cannot meet the Roman army in the open field. We are asking for certain defeat. I believe that victory or defeat must follow the will or even the caprice of the immortal God. I cannot accept that. That is because you are not a barbarian. <laughs> Mystery drama, The Heart of Bedizia, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Marion Seldes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. If you years ago. The place? A clearing in a dense, almost primeval forest near what is now the city of Colchester in England. This is a holy place midst a grove of sacred oaks. In the center is an altar. Kneeling before it, a tall, auburn-haired woman, a warrior woman, for she is wearing armor. But the armor is pierced and broken and blood-stained. Standing above her is an old man with a white beard and flowing white hair. He is dressed in black. He is Sinwin, the high druid. Bodizia, queen of the Iceni, why have you come to this sacred grove? Sinwin, archdruid, holiest of mortal men, living voice of the immortal gods, I have come here to die. Musicians, wake the gods. So that they may hear the plea of Bodizia. Gods! Gods of all the rivers and the mountains, I speak here now for Bodizia. Listen then to the story of Bodizia. Let it be told so that you may bestow upon it your blessing or your curse, that you may pardon or condemn. Listen, all oh gods. Speak quickly, white-haired old windbag, for you are nobody and you speak to no one. Listen when you are a lie and your gods are lies. And it is you who have brought me here. Here to the silver cup of poison. And our great Celtic people to their death and destruction. Smell the fires, Sinwin, and hear the screams of our immolated sons and our violated daughters. What has brought me here to the sacred grove, to the holiest of oak trees? In but a few moments, I shall drain the poison from the silver cup and bodice be no more. When did it begin? It began, I know now, as he lay dying, my husband, Prosotokos, king of the ice. And with the will he made on his deathbed. Bodicia. Yes, my lord. I have caused the will to be written. The will, my lord? Yes, my queen. But, my lord, what need is there of a will? On the death of an Iceni king, his widow ascends the throne. The Romans show no dis position to honor 
British customs. Therefore, I have been advised to leave half of my estate to... to the Emperor Nero. The Roman Emperor Nero? Why? My love, you must realize half a kingdom is better than none. This way, he will accept the legality, and you and our daughters will have something. But if Nero wants this kingdom, he'll take it. At any event, there will be bloodshed. But in the end, he will take it. No. The Romans love the byplay of legality. And we already have the imperial assurance from Nero himself that he will be satisfied with the arrangement. From whom do we have this assurance? From the Archdruid. Is it so, Sinwin? Yes, it is so. How? We have been told that we have the imperial assurance. Where is it? Where? May I see it? Where is the parchment? We have the emperor's word. Do we have it in writing? One does not insult the emperor of Rome by demanding a signature to his promise. My queen, I feel that the emperor Nero will keep his promise. But my lord... My queen, it is blasphemy to dispute with the dying. Kneel all here in this room. Kneel as this favored one of the immortal gods waits for the passage across the river of darkness. Kneel. My husband, the king, had not long to wait till his eyes closed for the last time. And I had not long to wait for the arrival of Cato, the Roman procurator of Britain. A big bulky, fleshy man. He rode into the royal palace with a cohort of cavalry clattering behind him. Halt! Halt! Welcome, Cato Decinius. Welcome? Who is this woman? I am the widow of King Prosutagus. I am the queen of the Iceni. Queen? Where Rome rules, there is only one queen. Octavia. Consort to the Emperor Nero, in whose name I take possession of this palace and of all the property therein. Where is your authority? My authority is this sword and the 500 spears of my men. We have the imperial assurance from the Emperor Nero that we are to share the kingdom equally. Where is your document? My document? To prove the existence of this assurance. I... But my husband, King Prosotogus, he wrote a will. Rome does not recognize the pretensions of upstart barbarian tribal chieftains. Leave this place, woman. Woman? I'm Queen Bodicia. Remove her from our presence. Don't you dare touch me. I'm a queen. You're nothing but petty, thieving scoundrels. Shut her mouth. <clears throat> and now leave. <clears throat> leave while you are still free to do so. I protest this illegal. I have... Again, Polinus. <clears throat> no, you cannot silence me. Tie her to the post. <clears throat> Give her the whip. <clears throat> Oh, and who are these? Your daughters? No! Let them spend the night in the tents of the centurion. No! Speak, Berditia. Speak with humility to the immortal gods. Yes. I shall speak lies and nonsense to gods who do not exist. But better to babble than to remember that night. Somehow, it passed and thus ravaged and disgraced. I made my way deep into the forest to find solitude and a place to hide the shame of our house. But my own people gathered round me. The immortal gods cry for vengeance. And we shall be avenged. Let us rise against Rome. Wait. Who cries wait? I, Vectus, 
son of Av Willow Dunham. Wait for what? For the chance to win. Victory or defeat is in the hands of the immortal gods. The omens are favorable. To rise up now is to ask for speedy defeat and lingering death. I know you, Victor, son of Willow Dunham. Your mother was a Roman. But I am a Briton. You propose treason. I propose caution. Cowardice. Wisdom. Blasphemy. Silence. I have heard of you, Vectus. You have the name of a bold and fearless fighter. Do you shrink from this just and holy war? With all my heart, I would struggle and even die in a just and holy cause. I ask you to reconsider this ill-timed and doomed adventure. And what of the unbearable insult to the women of the house of Prosotagos? You must swallow it. He is a traitor. Kill him. No, wait, wait. He belongs to me. I will kill him myself. Draw your sword, Roman dog. My queen, I... I speak for the good of Britain. Draw your sword, coward. I will not take arms against my queen. Your queen is a slut who lives in Nero's palace in Rome. Draw your sword and try to defend yourself. I command it. Very well, your majesty. No one is to raise a hand against him. He is mine. Your majesty. Quiet, dog. We do not talk. We fight. But your majesty. To the death. But your majesty must listen to me. Sing your death song. Very well, your majesty. If there be no other way. Don't hurt me. Don't let me hurt me. Each is a match for any man in Britain. In the world. Now. Now, your majesty, what must I do? You. You have disarmed me. No one has ever struck the sword from my hand before. I'm sorry, my queen. You have the right to kill me. I have only the obligation to worship, love, and obey you. Just! At least I shall have died in combat. No, your majesty, we must talk. Talk? (laughs) What is there to talk about? Everything. Grant me this favor. I shall never ask another. Yes? Retire to the side of this holy oak with me, and let us speak in private. Do not listen to his honeyed words of treason. Listen, listen first. And if they be treason, kill me. Very well, Vectus, I will listen. All of you, retire and leave us alone. And now, Vectus... Do not rise up against Rome. Better to be crushed into the dirt underfoot. Do not rise up now. Why not now? Now, when the wound is raw and fresh, the pain can only be relieved and the disgrace wiped out by Roman blood. Are you a woman out to avenge her own agony or a queen who must think of an entire nation? Are you saying I must take no revenge against Rome? I am saying you must exact justice. Well, say it any way you will. It must still end in a spilling of Roman blood. And British. My people will die gladly. No one dies gladly when the cause is hopeless. Why do you insist the cause is hopeless? Isn't it? For years it's been illegal for our people to bear arms. Bodicea. An entire generation has grown to man and womanhood, unpracticed, untrained in the use of arms. But courage can overcome every obstacle. Everyone, perhaps, except the disciplined legions of Rome. We must wait. Oh, again that word, wait. Until we have taught our people the skills of warfare. And how long must we wait? I, I cannot say. As long as is needed. And in the meantime, I am to swallow the insults of Rome. The injury that I have suffered at the hands of Cato Desenius. For now, my queen, for now, it must be forgotten. As you can tell by now, this is going to be a war story. And it might be interesting to note that in these days, while we in this country are debating the combat role of women in the armed forces, Almost one-third of the Celtic Britons were warrior women who fought with swords and spears side by side with the men. I shall return shortly with Act Two. 
Before weeds and pests threaten to ruin your garden, trees, or foliage, True Value Hardware Stores suggest you take preventive measures. Hi, Pat Summerall to say you can start by arming yourself with ortho lawn and garden products like Seven Garden Dust, now just two ninety nine for a one-pound canister. Ortho 7 prevents insects like tomato hornworms, strawberry weevils, and squash bugs from damaging your crops. And you'll find other ortho products... a French philosopher. And when that woman happens to be a queen who commands an eager army, the chances for peace are slim indeed. Boditia, deposed queen of the ancient Celtic Britons, has ample justification for trying to exact a bloody revenge from Rome. But as one of her counselors tries to caution her... Rome has the finest, the most highly disciplined army in the world. And what are we? A horde of unskilled barbarians. Barbarians? My lady, we are no match for Rome. Then we must die. No. We must live. As slaves? No, as men and women who shall carefully prepare for the moment of victory. And forget what Rome has done to no, us? No, no, remember. And let that remembrance bring wisdom, not anger. How can Rome be defeated? Not by force in the open field, but by cunning. <laughs> That was wise counsel given to me by Victus. But he did not consider the power of the arch druid. For we are and always have been a religious people. You counsel delay, do you, Victus? Yes, Holy One. Our gods speak. They speak through omens and signs. They speak when there is a reddish glow about the moon. Behold! The moon, Buditia. What is the color that surrounds the moon? Red. What is the color of blood? Red. And whose blood is it? Not just the blood of our queen and her innocent daughters, but the blood of every Briton. Yes, the blood of the gods themselves. Here we are. In our thousands, a mighty host. Let us be terrible in our vengeance. Cato, the Roman despoiler, is even now polluting the palace of our queen. He is guarded by only a few hundred. Let us take revenge. How could I resist the opportunity to make Cato pay for his outrages? Yes, Simon was right. There was a debt. It could only be paid in blood. But this is a declaration of war. So be it. No, listen to me. There's a time to listen and a time to act. This is not the time. Tell me, Vectus, when will the time come? When we are ready, my queen. And who will decide when we are ready? Now, at this moment, we can overwhelm Cato. Kill him and every one of his soldiers and servants and the traitors among our people who serve him. Odicia, this is what Nero wants us to do. Nero wants us to slaughter his own procurator? Are you mad? All this is part of his plan. Nero foresees this vengeance of yours. He wants you to take it. And this shall become his pretext to spread fire and sword all through Britain. Does this half Roman still babble, Bodizia? Our very gods have been violated. Our gods demand vengeance. I could no longer hear the calm voice of Vectus. I could only see the ugly, leering face of Cato the Roman. I could feel the pain of the whip biting into my body. I could feel the shame of the outrage searing my soul. I was mad with the desire for revenge. No one, nothing could prevent me from spilling the blood of Cato. If it is to be done, let it at least be done successfully. All here recognize your superior skill in warfare, Vectus. Shall you lead the army? No, my queen. Not the army, not this huge, unwieldy horde. I want a thousand of the older men. Veterans. Men who have wet their swords before. At 
the head of a thousand picked men. Vectus and I made our way back to what had once been the palace of the Iceni kings. I will kill the first man who makes a sound. Quietly. Walk quietly. If you encounter a Roman, dispatch him quietly. Let no one live to give the alarm. Slowly, silently, we entered the town. No one expected an attack. The few sentries were either asleep or drunk. They died quickly. Now, we stood before the ancient palace. Cato was feasting with his officers in what had recently been the council room of the Iceni king. It was a roaring, drunken revel. We entered the hall, unseen by any within. The Roman weapons were stacked against the wall. Quickly, we picked them up. What is this? What? <laughs> what? It's the widow. What is it you want here? Another lesson? Polonis! Polonis, your scoundrel, where is the whip? I hold the whip here in my hand, Cato. Oh, you, you must be mad. Tie him to the post. What, uh, what you dare to lay hands on an official of Rome? Polonis, step forward. Come here, dog. Take this whip. And now do to your master what you have done to me. No, Polonus. Let us see twice the zeal that you practiced on me, Polonus. And you shall be rewarded by a quick and merciful death. Begin now. No! Not a Roman survived the vengeance of that night. And all over Britain, the tribes rose up in their fury. Everywhere the tale was the same. Death to all who were Romans. What have you to say now, my bold Vectus? Ilea yucta est. What is that? Latin. What does it mean? The die is cast. Must you say it? In the Roman tongue. Yes, my queen. It is necessary to be able to think in their tongue, to try to understand what they intend to do now. What is the difference? We proved tonight that we're more than a match for them. Yes, we're more than a match for elderly veterans for raw reserves. But soon we shall be facing hardened, battle-tested legions. And that will tell another story. We shall sweep them into the sea. My queen... We must avoid an open fight. How can we win unless we smash them in the field? We cannot smash them. No? We must bleed them. Look at me. Look at yourself. We both wear Roman breastplates, stripped from some poor dead devils. We both carry Roman javelins. See how much better and stronger they are than our own? And their tactics, far superior. But I don't understand you, Vectus. You forget. Our history is the will of our God. Yes, but the Romans also have their gods. Ours shall prevail. Only if we fight on ground where our gods are strongest. And where is this ground? Here. Here in the forest. The Romans cannot fight in the dense, closely packed woods. They need the open plains to maneuver, to take advantage of their weapons and tactics. But what can we do in the forest? Stay here and wait for the Romans to come in after us, as they must. We shall bleed them. A man here, a man there. And soon their armies shall have melted away. But who has the patience for this merchant's warfare? We must develop it. Let us pause here, Bodicia. Why? To talk to the gods. Only Sinwin the Archdruid may speak with the gods. <laughs> Sinwin is an old fraud. Blasphemy! Is it? You must know that Sinwin is only interested in saving his own skin. Here, let us dismount. But Why? <laughs> I've already told you, so that we may hear the voices of the gods. Come, walk with me. Do you feel the presence of the gods? Yes. Yes. I, I, I had no idea that this, this was a holy place. Every forest is a holy place for the immortal gods. 
Ask them, Bodhichi. Ask them what they would say to you. Ask. Gods? Immortal gods? Do you speak through me? Do you speak through me? Listen, Bodhichi. Listen, and the words shall issue forth from your own lips. Bodhicca, favored of women, let us help you. Let your gods help you. Let us help you here in our sacred forest where we rule supreme. Let us help you. Wait here. Wait here for the Roman host. Wait here and prevail. Did you hear them? Yes. This is a place of wonder, Vector. Of such wonders as mankind has never seen. For a moment I'd forgotten that I was a woman. I've never forgotten that you are a woman. What are you saying? I... I have said too much. Well, perhaps you've not said enough. I have always loved you. I know. You know? It is obvious in the way you look at me. The way you speak to me. Then... You must forgive my presumption. Love cannot be presumptuous. Especially when it is returned. You love me, then, my queen? Yes, Vector. I've always loved you. So, blows the wind in that direction. And why not? Surely no man and woman could ever be more worthy of each other. But you can see the beginnings of the problem. Although most stories concern themselves with love and war, love and war seldom mix. Our final hour is marked, said Napoleon. And no one can claim a moment beyond his foreordained time. But the problem is we can only learn the allotted times as they apply to the others in the past. When it comes to ourselves, there is only one way to find out, isn't there? And of course, at that moment, the knowledge is no longer of any use to us. I love you, Vectus. I loved you when you first came to our court to lead my husband's armies. And I resigned my command because I could not be disloyal to my king. But we love at the behest of the gods. And this love in this holy place is at their command. Do you believe this? Yes. I believe this. There is magic in this night. Yes, my beloved, we Britons are people of the forests. And so long as we shall remain in these forests, we shall prevail. It's only when we become like the people of the open plains that we shall be destroyed. Oh, that is not at this time. And in this place, talk of destruction, my beloved. It was a night that was filled with magic. All about me were scenes of such wonders I had never dreamed could be. And Vectus, beloved Vectus, was a good and wise teacher. See how the stream ripples with rainbow colors in the sudden shafts of early sunlight? Yes. These are the spirits of the sky. See how bright they are? That is because they are spirits of love. Love. Oh, yes. Because they're so warm and so filled with life. Vectus, this is the first time that anyone has ever spoken to me about the spirits of love. Oh, I cannot believe that. Yes, I have never seen beauty in the world until just now. Why not? Perhaps it was because I was always taught that life was just a grim business. Well, it can be. 
Unless it is made beautiful by love. But I've never known love. Until just now. But surely you... You loved your husband. He was an old man. The match was arranged. I spent my years learning to be a queen. You have become a great queen. But I've never been able to be a woman. Woman in love. Oh, how I envied the humblest of my women slaves who had a man to turn to when his work was finished. There it is. See how the water sparkles in this lovely stream. Let us follow it, my dear. But we have the right. The right? Well, the entire countryside is in flames. There's the war. Have we the right to move away from it as if it didn't exist? Merely for the sake of our own pleasure. There will be enough of war and hatred and killing. Enough ugliness and misery soon, my dearest. Let us steal a moment or two while we may. Who knows how long we both shall live. It is. You're frightened. The tone in your voice. What of it? Sends a chill through me. Oh, my darling, I meant nothing by it. Yes, you did. Are you saying that we are destined... To lose? I have said nothing. Our fates have not yet been cast. We... We can win. Oh, to hear you say that. There is only one course we can follow. It will take superhuman self-discipline. Are we capable of it? But... Let us not think of that now. No. Now let us steal a moment which shall be even sweeter to having been stolen. Yes, my love. And so, the hours and the days passed. No, not many of them, actually. All too few. It was impossible to get away from the war. It kept intruding itself, no matter where we tried to turn. Your Majesty. Yes, Holy One. Your place is with the army in the field. The army has no business being in the field. Does Vectus determine the strategy of our forces now, Your Majesty? Vectus speaks for me, Sinwin. And while the two of you dally in adulterous union, the opportunities to destroy Rome are slipping from our grasp. I warn you, Sinwin. Your priestly robe does not give you license to insult the queen or myself. You dare to raise a hand to the arch-druid of Britain? I will cut off the head of the arch-druid if he does not learn to control his tongue. The gods will punish this blasphemy. Silence! I could not silence the murmuring of my people. A council was convened of all the chiefs and elders. The almost universal sentiment was to meet the Romans in open combat. And then Vector spoke. Hear me. He is a Roman spy. He has my leave to speak. Hear me. A Roman army has landed in Britain. The 21st, the 11th, and the 9th legions. They are less than 30,000. We outnumber them five to one. Remember, these are professional soldiers of Rome. The battle-hardened veterans. It is men like these who, under the Emperor Claudius, defeated our grandparents and took this island. That was a hundred years ago. True! But what have we learned in a hundred years, Sinwin? Answer me that! Are we better warriors than our grandfathers? Braver? More skillful? Shall we repeat their mistakes? Shall we throw ourselves against the spears of the legions just as they did? People... All he has to offer is the counsel of despair. Listen to what I have to offer. Because it is our only chance for victory. We are not Rome's only conquered and martyred province. Half the world thrones under her cruel yoke. The Teutonic tribes in Germany. Our own Celtic brothers and sisters in Gaul. The Iberians in Spain. The Scythians. The Greeks. The Egyptians. The Persians. Who are all these people? How do we even know they exist? These are fellow sufferers. Now and then, one nation revolts. But because it is only one nation, the Romans crush it with ease. But listen, my countrymen, suppose, just suppose, all of us were to rise against Rome at once. Suppose she had ten revolts to put down instead of only one. What then? This is a dream. Of course! Freedom always begins as a dream. 
fact, men and women of faith can make it come true. His oratory touched the hearts and minds of his listeners. And suddenly there it was, the worldwide revolt against Rome. True, most of our people had never heard of these distant places, but everyone's imagination was fired by the possibilities, the exciting, thrilling possibilities. I sent envoys to Spain and to Gaul, to Germany, to wherever Rome ruled. But soon it became apparent we would have problems. Yes, my queen? We've heard from none of our ambassadors. These things take time. Time, Victus. How much time? I cannot say. Revolts are not organized in hours. It, it may take months, perhaps years. But we cannot wait for years or even months. But we must. Queen, surely you recognize the importance of a long-range plan against Rome. Yes, I do. Because, my beloved, you have civilized me a little. But the people are restless and thirsty for revenge. I must lead them into combat against Rome or else... Or else I shall lose them. They shall cast me aside and follow another leader. Very well. If we must fight now, let us fight now. But let us fight carefully. Let us snap at their heels, capture their supply wagons, kill off their stragglers. It was wise counsel. And for a while it kept the army occupied and content. But unfortunately it did not flatter the manhood of most of my soldiers. They were becoming restless. They were tired of striking a blow and running away. They demanded a fight to the finish. Yes, a fight to the finish, but it is certain to be our finish. The Roman army is drawn up outside of Camulodunum. They are waiting for us to meet them. And why should we do that? So that we can conquer and put an end to this war. This is an old argument, Sinwin. Listen to me! Vector spoke and they listened. But they were restless. They wanted action and blood. I realized that Vectus would never understand the barbarian side of his heredity. He was too civilized. Then, finally, we heard a trumpet call. The Romans! They send us a herald! I have a message from the commander of the Imperial Roman Army in Britain. Speak. No, it is our mission and purpose to bring matters to a conclusion. But this can only be done in combat. We are drawn up in battle array to await your coming, but we fear you are too cowardly to meet us in the field. Instead, you prefer to skulk like thieves and assassins. Is that the entire message? That is the entire message. Take back this answer. If your commander has the courage to place himself at the head of his troops, as I do in front of mine, we shall see who the cowards are. Speak these words to the Roman butcher in my name. He did it deliberately to provoke you. And he succeeded. But surely common sense... We Britons are bereft of common sense, which is why we are barbarians. Listen no longer to the counsels of confusion. Victory is ordained by the gods. In their name we fight. In their cause, we conquer! I actually believed him. I believed that the gods would give us victory. We approached Camelodunum, and there was the Roman army drawn up in battle order. We outnumbered them. But I had a grim lesson to learn. Superior numbers do not always mean... Superior strength. Godicia, it is not too late. It is too late for your counsels now, Vectus. They will form their dreaded wedge. They will cut through us like a knife through butter. I can no longer listen, Vectus. Let us attack. You mean to make a frontal assault? Let all who want to end the oppression of Rome follow me. He 
followed me, and so did the rest of the army. And soon, it was all over. I cannot believe there could be so much devastation in so short a time. The Romans stood their ground and then formed the terrible wedges that Vectus had spoken of. Soon we were fleeing in disarray. The Romans followed and the fields turned red with blood. The blood of Britons. We were being slaughtered like cattle. I fought as long, as hard as I could. And then my horse went down. Suddenly I was seized by strong hands. It was Vectus. He lifted me into his saddle. Where we go? We must save your life. No, let me die here. You must live. What? To fight another day. You know as well as I do there cannot be another day. If not, we can reach the forest. We shall be saved. Look at me, pursued. They're gaining. Bodicia. Neither of us must be taken alive. What are you doing? You ride on. I'll stand here and delay them. No! Go! Vectus! Vectus, my beloved! It was the last I saw of them. The horse galloped into the forest. Where could I go? Where could I hide? Britain was too small for me. Sooner or later, they must find me. I remembered Vector's last words. Neither of us must be taken alive. Did they take him alive, I wondered. They must not take me. And so I made my way to the sacred grove where I found Simon. And for the first time, I saw him for what he really was. An old fraud. <laughs> Remarkable. Vectus had known it all along. But I am a barbarian. And the barbarians are no match for Rome. So I will raise the cup. The silver cup of poison. And she died. What happened to Vectis, we cannot say. But she was a great queen. She knew how to live. And she knew how to end her life. But she was wrong about one thing. She said that the barbarians were no match for Rome. The fact is, some 400 years later, it was the barbarians who finally brought down the Roman Empire. What had been impossible in the year 62 AD was accomplished with relative ease in the 5th century. It's all a matter of timing, isn't it? So much depends not so much on what we do, but when we do it. I shall return shortly. It is true the ancient Celtic peoples were cruel and violent, but there was no malice in their behavior. They simply didn't know better. How can we account for the cruelty and violence of the so-called civilized Romans? The answer, and it holds good to this day, is that people who should know better should be judged more strictly. Our cast included Marion Seldes, Russell Horton, and Lord Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now a preview of our next tale. Yes, Monsieur Zenobi. What is it you wish to say? I, uh, I wish, uh, I wish I hadn't paid you in the demands. We would have an encounter like this one practically every day. And then, suddenly, one afternoon, something happened. You reek! You reek, Mona Lisa! Are you speaking to me, Mr. Yes, you reek! What does that mean? It means I have found it. You found what? The key. 
the secret of the smile. With a few strokes of the brush, I have discovered immortality. What does that mean? It means, my dear Mona Lisa, that we shall live forever. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by White Westinghouse Appliance Company. This is Tommy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Sweet dreams.